Hi there. Thanks for joining us today for our webinar. We'll be sharing some great ways to support your students in science through this challenging school year. My name is Nate Shelley from Vernier Software and Technology. And joining me today are my Vernier colleagues, John Melville, Director of Biology, and Melissa Hill, a chemistry staff scientist. John has over a decade of experience teaching at the college level, and he's designed inquiry-based lab exercises in his integrated data collection technology in his courses. John received a BA in both biology and psychology from Sonoma State University, and he also holds a PhD in zoology from Oregon State University. And my other colleague, Melissa, has seven years of experience teaching at the college level, including general chemistry, biochemistry, organic chemistry, and spectroscopy. She earned a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry from St. Edwards University and her PhD in Biophysical Chemistry from UC Davis. All right, guys, take it away, Melissa and John. Well, thanks, Nate. And welcome again, everyone, to uh, our webinar today. Um, Again, my name is Melissa, as Nate said, I'm one of the chemists here and John is our director of biology. <laughs> we, uh, we're part of the technical support and R&D team here at Vernier. We've both been at Vernier for over 10 years and we're former educators, just like Nate said, and really everyone in the technical support and research and development team at Vernier is a former educator. So we like to say Vernier is like for teachers, by teachers. I think I stole that line from you, John, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's a good line. Um, so uh, yeah, we're just, we're here to really advocate for you when it comes to our engineers, our software team, and our curriculum team uh, developing stuff for you. So we want... Uh, your lives as teachers to be better and to have more and more tools to help you educate at the level that you want to be educating. So that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for today. Um, as Nate said, the Q&A feature is open. Please put all your questions in there. John will be answering them as we go. Nate may also jump in if it's important, if it's, if it's getting overloaded. Um, but John's definitely going to interrupt me as we go. He's going to bring up any questions um, that you guys have that are important to what's going on. So put them in at any time. In fact, let's try it right now because I hate internet crickets just as much as you all do teaching <laughs> virtually. So put your name in there. Tell us where you're from. Tell us what you want to learn today in this webinar. If there was one thing that I could say or talk about in today's webinar that you would walk away and think this was a successful hour of your time, please let me know what that is. Throw it in the Q&A. Hi, Bonnie. Thanks for, thank, thanks for testing <laughs> it out for us. Um, but yeah, let us know and do it throughout the whole, the whole time. Hey, Paul. <laughs> Jonathan, Yay. thank you. All right, from New York. Look at this. We got people from all over the country. So that's awesome. Okay, and the last thing um, to mention is we are going to do a hands on activity with graphical analysis. So if you don't already have it on your device, be thinking about it. Maybe head over to our website while I'm doing the introduction here and, and get a download for it. I'm going to mention it multiple times. It's a free download, www.vernier.com backslash GA. Um, and uh, just make sure you have it ready to go because we're going to do a hands-on activity with it. No sensors required, nothing like that. We're just going to work with the app and, um, and show you all the great tools that it has in the free version and in the pro version that we're going to talk about a lot today. All right. So most of you are probably doing some remote education right now. And um, Vernier has a lot of options for you. And if you haven't gone to our website to look for remote education tools from us in a couple of months, or maybe even since the pandemic started, you should definitely revisit our website. I think it changes just about weekly. I mean, John, I don't know about you, but I'm having trouble keeping up with all the changes on our website with how many new tools we have for remote solutions. It is happening very fast. 
It's very, very fast. So definitely keep it on your radar every once in a while, check it out. But if you haven't done it in a long time, definitely do it now. Um, you just go to vernier.com, click on this explore remote solutions. It's right in, in the front, right, right in your face. Um, and then you click through and it wants you to self-select the uh, level you teach at. So it looked like most of you were, were high school today. It was pretty split between high school and college, but definitely explore the different options. Um, so this is kind of the landing page for all our remote solutions. This first webinar here is um, a really good overview of a lot of the solutions we have. And David Carter did a great job of getting pretty and deep into all the different options. So that's a really good overview. I highly recommend that one. Today, we're gonna talk a lot about GA Pro, which is our brand new app for um, remote education. And um, so I'm gonna put a pin in that. We'll come back to that later. So Vernier Video Analysis, it's a great tool for physics teachers. How many of you are teaching physics? Oh, I see some physics teachers in the audience. That's awesome. Um, you would love Vernier Video Analysis if you have not, if you're not already aware of it. Um, it does come with a free 30-day trial. There's an entire webinar dedicated to teaching it. Um, but what it's really good for is if you want to get data from a video. So if you have a video, we're showing here a basketball um, being shot and you wanna get you know, gravity or the effects of, of motion, the effects of um, Newtonian physics and things like this, it's a great app for that. So I highly recommend it, especially if you're teaching physics, um, check that out. Pivot Interactives is um, basically for all the different disciplines. We have something for physics, chemistry and biology, general, um, what, what I really like about Pivot Interactives is it has a different video for every single variable that you could be testing in an experiment. So I'm sorry, I'm a chemist. A lot of my examples today are going to be chemistry related. But for example, if you were using Pivot, Pivot Interactives to look at intermolecular forces, which is always on the AP Chem exam, they, they talk about it um, and ha always have a question on it. Um, you, there would be a Pivot Interactives um, module that you would go into and there would be looking at the evaporation of alcohols, for example, of methanol, ethanol, butanol, all the different ones. And there's a different video for all of them. And the students go through each of those videos, get the data from it and really see how um, the data changes based on the particular variable. So just I mean, it took masses of, massive amounts of work to make all of those videos that you definitely as instructors probably do not have enough time for. So it's a great resource and it has a free webinar and it also has a free trial. Yeah, I would add that it's, um, there's some great resources in Pivot for biology. The enzyme one, just like Melissa brought up is terrific because it looks at several different temperatures. Um, uh, it's just, and it's several different pHs and it's got so many different variables that there are things that you probably would not even be able to do in your classroom. So it's definitely worth looking at for sure. Absolutely. Um, and so if I scroll down a little bit further on this page, now I come to my completely free resources. Um, if you do any coding, any engineering education, which it, it feels like every single level from K-8 to college plus is working with coding and engineering education. We have some great coding activities with Arduino in here that are free, check those out. Um, and that leaves me, the last thing I wanna talk about in this, in this intro here is our experiment and sample data library. So a big question that I get from educators right now is what, does Vernier offer for me for free for remote education? And this is the number one answer for that, this experiment and sample data library. Click through there, um, look around. What it is, is when the pandemic first, uh, when lockdown first happened, um, basically all us Vernier scientists got together and we're like, we need to get sampled together sample data together for all the educators out there so they can start handing out sample data. And so all of us worked really feverishly, we looked through all of our old sample data and started collecting new sample data. So basically every single Vernier book 
Ver Ver chemistry with Vernier, biology with Vernier, physics with Vernier, um, middle school science, uh, physiology, organic chemistry. All those books have a really good sample set of data taken as if a student would take it. And it also has the student instructions. So you can hand your student the student instructions and the sample data as if they took it and they can do all the analysis and still do some of the tools and kind of, it's not a great substitute for a hands-on experience, but it's, it's good. It's a really good start. So I highly recommend looking through that and it's completely 100% free. So those are some great tools to peruse, but like I said, we're going to talk mostly about graphical analysis and graphical analysis pro today. Many of you are probably very familiar with graphical analysis. It looks like a lot of you were very familiar with Vernier, so you've probably touched this app um, and hopefully taken some data with it. It's a free download available for Windows, Mac, Chrome, iOS, and Android. And again, if you didn't hear me in the beginning, if you came in a little bit late, the uh, we're going to do a hands-on activity with this, so please download it to your device that you're watching me on right now, or uh, or locate it on your device if you already have it. Um, and that's the free version. So that's graphical analysis. I like to say graphical analysis free. <laughs> uh, <laughs> marketing probably doesn't like me saying that, but that's what I call it. <laughs> no, no, it is. It's free. It's one of those things that any student anywhere at any time can get access to or a teacher can for free. Absolutely. Completely free. And then I wanted to say, if you're happen to use an older version of GA, we have version five, which you'll need uh, for this exercise. Yeah. In fact, you'll need 5.2 or greater. Um, 5.4 is the latest one. So if you have located it, kind of look through and make sure you have the right version number. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Um, and that's the free version again. So Graphical Analysis Pro is the upgraded version of Graphical Analysis. And I like to call it an upgrade because it's still the same app. You just use uh, your site license to invoke new uh, features in the app. So it's not a completely separate app at all. And that gets a little confusing. And that's why I'm going to spend a lot of time showing you the free version and then how that compares to the pro version. And not only for uh, convenience sake and for you to see what you can do with GA free, because maybe that's all you need. There's some great features in there that you may just want to use with your students right now virtually. Um, but to, to show you the new features in Graphical Analysis Pro and why you might want to upgrade because there's some really, really nice features in Graphical Analysis Pro. It is a yearly site license for the fee. Um, and that is a site license for your um, department or school. And um, when we do our, our hands-on demo today, I'm actually gonna give you a free 10-day trial code for Graphical Analysis Pro. And I'm not doing that just so you can participate in a hands-on activity and it gets you to you know, pay attention more and, and be more involved in the webinar. Um, but it's also gonna help you for the next 10 days to kind of poke around and see if you like it. You can distribute it to your students in the next 10 days play around with your students, see if they like it, see if it's helping you accomplish those goals and um, those, those new features that you want to incorporate into your teaching right now. Because I know we're all uh, grasping for new things in this, in this new environment. Um, but to ultimately answer the question, if you um, want to upgrade to GA Pro based on your teaching and based on what your teaching looks like, we have to kind of talk about what teaching today looks like. It looks a little different for everyone, right? Some of you may be teaching in person and you're doing everything you can to be safe. You're doing social distancing, you're having face masks and that's great. And you have a sensor in your hand, you have that temperature probe and your student has that temperature probe in their hand. And we're all taking data together and we're having a live experience. Um, but maybe at the same time, you also have students who are watching you live, like you're watching me live today um, in a synchronous learning environment. They're remote, they're at home, 
um, but they're joining in live via Zoom. You're doing a demo from the lab. Uh, or from home and, um, and you are collecting data and they are watching you collect data. And then you may also have um, asynchronous learning. So you have students that you're just having to make videos of yourself, you're having TAs make videos, um, you're gathering as much content as you can from manufacturers and other websites like us and, and putting it all together and, and giving it to them so that they can review it on their own time and then they meet with you periodically. And maybe you're doing all three of these things. I know I've talked to a lot of educators that their students were allowed to choose. So they have a classroom that literally has every single one of these environments going on. And this is overwhelming for educators, right? You guys have been telling us that you are having to teach the same lesson three, four, five different ways, five different times. And that's just a lot right now. So when we designed GA Pro, we really wanted to take away some of that redundancy in your curriculum because you have enough going on and you have to replan, you know, content. Um, we, we really wanna help you out as much as possible. So that's, that's what GA Pro is here for. It's designed to take all those three environments that you see in this beautiful infographic that marketing made for us um, and take all those three environments, but, uh, but actually deal with them with one tool, which is Graphical Analysis Pro. And before I go on to our live demo, there's a couple of terms in this infographic that I want to um, define because I'm gonna use them a lot today. The first one there is data share. And I, we, we named these tools, I hope, appropriately. So they kind of make sense, but I never want to take that for granted. So uh, data share is basically when you as the instructor want to share data with your students via an online source. Um, it doesn't have to be the instructor sharing it with students. It can be sh students sharing it with each other as well but you wanna go through some online source, online route. And that can happen in the classroom. So if I had students in here today, I could data share via my network to them. That means I don't have to get closer to them. I can be socially distanced from them and share via an online source. I don't have to get a flash drive everywhere and move it around. I don't have to upload it to Google Drive and use another piece of software or another application to to get my data to my students. I can do it directly through Graphical Analysis Pro. And I don't know about you guys, but I have to open like six different tabs every morning on my computer and it's just a lot. So anytime I can reduce the number of apps I open, I love it. Um, but not only can I share with my students in my classroom, I can share with my student who lives a couple miles from campus. I can share with Mary from Massachusetts today, who's joining us, and she'll be able to see the exact same data that I'm collecting live here. Um, so that is a great tool to just share data live immediately because you cannot share data via a Zoom classroom environment. Um, the next big tool that I'm gonna talk about is video with data sync. And so especially with your asynchronous students, you're trying to get as much data collected for them, much content as collected as possible. Or also you may not have access to the laboratory that often. You may be able to go in once a month. Maybe you don't have access to it at all and you're just trying to do safe experiments in your home. So you're not able to videotape that much or, or do that much live data sharing. So maybe you're just, you're videotaping as much as you can. You're getting videos from other sources but you as the instructor are videotaping an experiment at the same time as collecting data. So you're doing a titration, you're videotaping yourself doing that, and you're collecting the data at the exact same time. Right now in the world, you have a video then, you have a data set then, and then you have maybe the student instructions. And you have to get all those pieces together and give that to your students. And particularly for a student who's never done an acid-based titration before, that's a lot. I'm sure you guys are seeing that disconnect in your students and you're wanting to help them really connect it a lot better and putting them all into one platform such as GA Pro with that video and data sync, they have it in one place, they get much more of a context 
for the experiment and the data and where it's all coming from. So those are the terms I wanted to find and define for you. And um, that's what I'm hoping to accomplish today with showing you GA Pro. So let's get started with our live demonstration. I have um, over here, a very simple experiment that I want to um, demonstrate for you. It's just citric acid and baking soda. I chose this experiment because basically everyone is familiar with this. We, uh, we do vinegar and baking soda with middle school students to get them involved in chemistry and to get them uh, really excited about science. And then we show it to them again in freshman chemistry uh, to do more quantitative work endo and exothermic reactions and get really quantitative with that reaction. It also is super simple because it just involves a coffee cup and um, a temperature probe. So, so let's go ahead and get started with that. And I'm going to pull up my graphical analysis. And this is just the free version of graphical analysis. So feel free to open it up now and get it ready to go, follow along with some of the tools I'm gonna to show you in free graphical analysis um, as much as you want um, in, in before we get into the GA Pro phase. But first I'm gonna connect my temperature probe to graphical analysis. So I gotta turn on my temperature probe. And I'm, today I'm using the, graph, the Go Direct temperature probe, which connects via Bluetooth to graphical analysis here. So now I'm going to select sensor data collection and find it in my Bluetooth uh, discovered wireless devices section right here. I could also have connected via USB and it would have automatically identified. If you have wired sensors with like a Lab Pro or, sorry, not a Lab Pro, a LabQuest Mini, or um, a lab quest, you can also use that with um, graphical analysis. And um, yeah, so now I've connected my temp probe. So you may be kind of squinting at your screen right now, because like, what does this say? What does this say? There's a way to improve that for your students. Go in via Zoom. Um, click on this little dot, dot, dot over here. Click on presentation. And then um, I like to use 1.25, but play around with it. Some of these bigger ones can get a little bit cluttered, but it kind of just depends on the monitor you're using and all that stuff. So definitely find that feature. Um, I also, I'm gonna, in doing this experiment, I need, to I need to check the sample data rate and data duration. Um, so I need to go into da data collection settings and the default for temperature probe data collection is two samples a second, which is fine, but I want to monitor this reaction a little bit longer. So I'm going to increase this to um, about five minutes. And if you're following, you know, Vernier lab books, these instructions are in those lab books directly. So make sure you um, have gotten our updated lab books to help you walk through this if you're doing data collection with sensors. Click done. Um, and then before I collect data, there's another under um, utilized, I, I like to think, I think a lot of people don't know about it, feature in graphical analysis. And that's a, a prediction feature. And I think it's even more powerful now in a virtual learning environment um, because you can have all your students um, click on this add prediction feature and then they get to draw what they expect the graph to look like. So in a temperature versus time graph, what would I expect an endothermic reaction to look like? And have your students draw that out. And so do it with me now if you're, if you're following along. I think an endothermic reaction might look like that. Um, so I'm going to just type in here endothermic reaction. And that's my prediction. And then it's on, on the graph. So now we're going to collect some data, see if my prediction is correct. Uh, I'm going to press collect here. And then I'm going to add my, bake, my 10 grams of baking soda to my 30 milliliters of uh, citric acid. It's about 0.1 molar citric acid. And look at all those bubbles. Isn't that exciting? Um, so the data is coming in. We see it over here. 
Awesome, awesome. Um, before I get too far along, first off, I think my prediction was okay. You know, I might have, uh, if I was trying to be really quantitative, have overestimated how much I was adding. That would have caused a, a really big mess in my room here. But um, I'm going to remove that prediction. And anytime I want to adjust what's being shown on the graph, I click on my X and Y axes, and those will tell me how to change what's being shown. So I'm going to turn off my prediction. And I know I'm going to do lots more trials of this. I'm going to do uh, lots more um, uh, experimental setups here. So I want to name this. And I'm going to just click on this dot, dot, dot. And I'm going to rename the data set. And I'm going to call this my endothermic reaction. All right. Um, and now I want to I want to actually see a little bit more detail what's going on. I'm going to turn on a data table over here and actually see the data coming in. I'm going to turn on the meter. The meter is a great way in a virtual learning environment to show your get a bigger in your face um, idea of what's happening. Uh, and then I can do some other analysis tools. I can do statistics. I can do curve fits. I can add an annotation. I can say that this is citric acid and um, baking soda. And I can move that around. And again, and this is all in the free version of graphical analysis. So all of this stuff can, um, can be done with the free version. You don't need the GA Pro feature at all yet. So now we're going to give everyone here the GA Pro license for two weeks. So you can really see the difference between that free version that I just went through and the pro version. So if everyone has their GA up, if you don't already, please open it up, click off of the welcome screen and you should see this little shield over here. Does everyone see this shield? Hoping everyone sees this shield. All right. Um, Your shield is going to be important, so you, you're going to want to, unless you're going to want to make sure that you can see that. Yeah, make sure you can see this shield. This is the important part. And just like I'm distributing the GA Pro license to you all today, this is how you would distribute it to your students if you want to play with them in the next ten days for that. Um, trial period that you have or if you do decide to upgrade and purchase you would distribute it to them the exact same way it'd just be a different code so click on this little shield and this is where you do the ga pro license key and the license keys over here in the bright orange hopefully everyone can see that but i'm going to type it in so do it with me n six q p seven b f v w all right i hope i typed that in right because that was a lot of letters all right yeah i did so now it's telling me at the bottom this is a trial version and when it expires i'm gonna close that because it's kind of bright and in my way um but now you'll see right away i have a different i don't have the shield anymore i have that data sharing icon remember i i talked a lot about data sharing a minute ago um, and, and I also have the video feature here in the graph options. So those are the two, two most, uh, in the, the best indicators right now, I can show you that that's been upgraded. So now I've got lots of data. It's pretty much, it's tapering out here. And so I want to give this data to my students. And so in order to do that, I have a handy dandy little uh, iPad here that's going to be my student iPad. And you all are also the students today. So I, as the instructor, want to data share this data that I just collected to you all. So you all have already um, added your GA Pro code. So your screens probably look like this. So go ahead and, and reset your screen, click on the untitled button there and click on new experiment. So now you're at the welcome screen 
And this is what your students would see. You've already given them GA Pro, you're the student now. And me as the instructor, I want a data share to you. So I'm the data sharing source from graphical analysis and you want to join in in my session. So first I need to start a data sharing session. So I click on the little data share. I click on start session. And now I get this code and oh, you're probably squinting again. I can make it really big, which really um, obvious, which is nice for virtual environments. And that is the data sharing code. So I just started a data sharing session. So students will want to connect to the graphical analysis source of data sharing. So they click on this middle button right here. And now they're gonna enter the source code in this little um, field. So I'm gonna enter that over here. So I'm gonna do Y E U three Q T and connect. And magically I have data. Does everyone else have data? Tell us, did it happen? Is it working? All right, you guys have data, right? Um, so I want to point out a couple of things here. First off, you notice the two screens look very different. I, as the instructor, I labeled some stuff. I opened some uh, data tables and some meters. Uh, the student version has none of that. And this is by design. You want, I, as the instructor, just want my student to have the raw data. I want them to do all the analysis on their own. Maybe I want them to share it back with me. Maybe I want them to share it with other students, but I don't want to do the analysis for them and then just share it with them because then I might as well just send them a data file, right? Um, so, so that's what it looks like when you data share. And so me as the student, I know I'm doing some endo uh, or endothermic reactions. I'm gonna zoom in there. I think I need to do some statistics. I'm going to do some statistics. Oh, you know, instructor, please, you know, what am I supposed to do next? How do I make this quantitative? And then you can have a conversation back and forth based on what the student is doing and analyzing and how they're working on it. Um, and not just following along with you, because we all know students learn a lot better when they have their hands on it. Um, and so this is great for virtual learning, but it's also great if you're doing in person stuff. Because um, it's a really easy way to give students data. Okay, so that's data sharing live. Now, if you um, have, if you want to make this a little bit more robust or give your students a video to go along with this to look at later for their homework, or if you have asynchronous students that you want to give them a bunch of content, you can add a video to this and sync the data like we discussed earlier. And I just happened to videotape that as I was going, we did a dry, we did a, we did a practice run and I videotaped it. So hopefully when you're doing this data live and with your students, you're videotaping it at the same time. So you don't have to do it a whole bunch of times. Um, but in order to do, to add a video, I want to uh, click on the view options here and I'm going to add a video and then that makes a bunch of stuff on the screen. So I'm going to turn off the meter. So it's a little cleaner. And now I can import a video. I'm going to click on import video. I have a video here ready to go. And this video in particular, I just started data collection at the same time I started the video. So I'm going to sync them at time zero. However, especially if you're creating pretty robust videos that have like a lot of context in them, like um, if you're setting up a, um, an acid-base titration and you want to show them how you set up the burette and how you set up the pH probe or how you calibrate a pH probe ahead of time, if you want to, as much robust content as you want to put into it, you can put into it. And then you just tell the synchronization that it happens at a different time. And that's gonna make a little bit more sense here. So in order to enable data sync, I gotta do this little curly cue up here. And then I click on this uh, little sync video to data button. And then I need to enable sync data with video. 
And so again, I said mine, I started the video at the same time as the data set. So zero, zero is fine. Um, so, but if I, you know, started at 30 seconds later, if I had some, some prep work that I wanted the students to see, I would just type in 30 seconds here. And then when the video got to 30 seconds, the data would start to come in and the students would see what happened then. Um, but that's hey, Melissa, yes. Can you give me the, um, the code to see the data again? Absolutely. Yeah. Let me just close that real quick. And the code Sorry, to see the data again is this right here. Y-E-U-3-Q-T. Thank you. I had to enter it in a couple of times because I got one digit off and, and it wouldn't work. So thanks for sharing that again. Yeah, of course. Sorry. Yeah, there it is. Hopefully everyone got it. All right. And then the, the license code, if, you're, if you had some issues downloading um, graphical analysis, the, the um, and, and our or are just joining us. Um, the license code is down here at the bottom to get you that GA Pro, and then the data sharing code to get you into my session is right here. All right, cool, cool. Um, okay, so back to um, the data sync. So now I've synced it, I'm all ready to go. And I just have to hit this start replay button. And now as the video starts, the data is gonna come in. And I, again, I took a few couple data points and then I added the baking soda. And now you see, as I add the baking soda, the temperature starts to drop and you see all the bubbles and you get a lot of context for it. And now the student has, has a, a better association between the video and the data as opposed to them having a video in this location, in this app, and then a data set in another app. It's all together in one. And, uh, and I can even speed this up because you know after that first uh, bubbling, it gets kind of boring. So I'm gonna speed that up and it's, you can see it's getting a lot faster now. Um, and that is if you are making your own videos and collecting data at the same time and wanna give that information to your students. All right, so it looks like everyone's hanging in there. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, so maybe you're not able to get into the laboratory at all. Maybe you have, um, or you have very limited time in the laboratory and you don't, don't have the ability to make videos for yourself. Well, good news because the scientists, like I said, were pretty nerdy and we had to test all this out and make all our own videos. Um, we have provided some sample data for you in, within the app itself. Oh, before, before I get into that, I wanna say one more thing about this. So I still have my data sharing session on. And for those of you that are, join, are participating in the, in the hands-on activity here, your screen still looks like this. A video was never added to your screen. I can go in here and look at videos and it's gonna tell me that there's no video there. I have to import my own video. It's, Really important to remember that videos do not data share. Again, that's by design. We want students to have raw data to do their own analysis. If you want them to have this video to do this analysis and all this context together, like we've been talking about, you need to save this file. So just go into file, save it. And I'm gonna call it um, endothermic reaction. And not only is now the video saved in that file, the synchronization to the data is saved within that file. And if I want all of that to get to my student, then I send it to them, you know, I upload it to Google Drive or Blackboard or whatever you guys are using to give stuff to your students because the data share is, is that's not the purpose of, of adding the video is not to data share. Um, 
Okay, so let's get back to uh, using our sample experiment. So go into a uh, new experiment here. And the other thing you get with GA Pro is this feature here, sample experiments. So you click on that. And there's a ton of options in here for chemistry, physics, biology, middle school. Peruse this, play with it. It's um, got a lot of good stuff in it. In fact, the experiment I just did is in here. And it looks a little bit different um, than what I just did. And, uh, but before I get into it, I'm gonna address what just happened on y'all's screen. So I'm still data sharing. So I'm still assuming you either want to join a new experiment with me, or maybe you wanna continue on with the old data set and do some analysis. So that's why you're getting this screen over here. Do you want to start a new experiment? Do you want to join the same session? So I'm going to, I'm going to join it. But if you press disconnect, you'll just have the data that was already on there. And again, data, videos are not data shared. So I don't, uh, I don't have that video. I just have the data. However, because my students also have GA Pro, if I wanted them to go through this sample data with me, I could have them go into sample experiments and find the sample file in here and click on it. And now they have the exact same screen I do. So it just depends on, on what you wanna accomplish that day in your teaching. Um, but there's a lot of versatility in this and there's a lot of options. Um, and this one is a great example of the data sync because I did a whole bunch of setup in this video before the data comes in. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I, yeah, I put in my 30 milliliters of citric acid. I poured it in, did some fancy maneuverings. And uh, then the, the data sink came in at 20 time 25 in the video. And then I added the baking soda, got lots of bubbling, got my decrease. And, uh, and then the students can analyze that data and look at it and make it quantitative and get, um, get the endothermic reaction information out of it directly without having to go to five different locations. It's all in one place now. The speeding up of the video can be really great, especially for some biology experiments where it may take 15 or 20 minutes, like for photosynthesis, it's really nice to be able to speed it up. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, and I, I know John filmed a lot of the biology experiments. I filmed a lot of the chemistry ones. And the chemistry ones, I really, uh, thought it was really important to show a lot of the setup because a lot of an acid base titration or a lot of an endothermic reaction is actually the setup and how how you pour things into a graduated cylinder because students aren't getting to do that right now so we kind of take it for granted that they just know what a graduated cylinder even looks like or what's an Erlenmeyer flask or um, things like this. So, so I thought it was important to show a lot of that background and a lot of that context. Um, but that is the video and data sync. And again, you can do it with your own videos. And then there's lots of sample experiments in there. That library should be growing over time. Um, so definitely uh, peruse that and see, see what your needs are there. Melissa, there's a really good question that came in on chat that I thought maybe we could expand upon um can students take their own videos of it, their own experiments and put them in the app and share them out absolutely so yeah as long as anyone who has ga pro can do all of the features that i just described um so you can have students data share to you which i think could be really valuable actually especially if you're doing um office hours or something like that and your student wants to share how they analyze the data or they got stuck on this one part and and then you can say well bring up the data and you can see exactly where they're getting stuck and how their plot process is going but they can add their own videos as well if you're having um 
them do really safe experiments at home, maybe some, some physics experiments that don't involve chemicals or things like this, you might wanna have them videotape themselves doing it with the data. Um, if you're able, some people are sending sensors home with their students. There's just a lot of versatility in this. So, but anyone who has the GA Pro license, which if your um, school or um, college department purchases it, then you can distribute it to everyone, including your personal computers, your departmental computers, your students' personal computers. That's how Vernier site license work. This is not a per seat thing any, with Vernier. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a good segue here into kind of this a little bit more detail about GA Pro and head over to the, head over to the webpage um, it's $69 right now. That'll get you the site license through June of 2021. And you can also do a 30 day free trial. Right now you have the 10 day free trial. That does not count against your 30 day free trial. So you can let your 10 day expire and sign up for a 30 day one. And then you can really get the feel for it. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot. And then there's, there's more information down here about site license. We get lots of questions about the site licenses. It can be used on any device owned by the school faculty or students, no seat limit. That is key. That is, that is how Vernier site licenses work. Um, and that applies to an entire school building or an entire college department. $69, and that is introductory pricing. We are planning to add some more features to Graphical Analysis Pro as it grows. So that's why we've kind of done this introductory pricing to get you, get you involved, get you excited about it. Um, we are planning to add um, uh, user-defined calculated columns and, and curve fits, which has been a request of Graphical Analysis free users for a very long time. So that's coming. Um, we're also gonna be able to do data sync with events with entry data. Right now you can only do it with time-based data. So there's gonna be a lot of new and exciting features. We're constantly working on this app. Um, and that, you know, if you have some features you're dying for, put them in the Q&A right now. Let us know what you want to be in there. Um, and yeah, if you have any other questions, put them in the QA right now. We're gonna address them, but I know with me, sometimes I need some time to process. If you wanna ask questions later, first of all, the website's a great resource. We have lots of training videos, all kinds of great stuff. We have chat on our website. So you can just open a chat window and you'll talk to me or John Melville or one of our other chemists or biologists. All the scientists are the ones that answer the chat and the email, info at vernier.com, email us or give us a call. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the, the end of, of the demo. And I hope we have answered all of your questions, but, but what other questions do you guys have? What, what were some interesting ones that came in, John? Uh, one was, um, there's nothing that can keep students also from sharing data with each other, right? That was one question that came up, so. Correct, yeah, students can share data with each other. Um, but remember, the analysis isn't being shared. So um, if you're sharing your data with a student, then that student can share it with other students. I kind of think of it as an advantage. Um, I mean, obviously, it can be taken advantage of. But um, if you have a student that got some really interesting data, maybe they got some really wonky data, and you want to talk about it with the rest of the class, that student can share their session with the rest of the class and everyone can talk about, well, why did this happen? Or, wow, that's a really good titration. Let's analyze that one. Or uh, what happened with your EKG there? Like, let's, let's look at this. You know, I, I think it's an advantage, especially because the analysis isn't shared, right? Your, your students aren't sharing the answers with each other. They're just sharing data. Good point. Another one was, um... Someone had some questions about sharing data um, in real time, like real time data collection. Um, like they were saying, is that a problem over Wi Fi or? 
Yeah, no, I mean, um, I just, I was just talking too long, but we could have shared that during the live data collection. I just, uh, I just talked for a long time and the data collection was over by the time I shared it with you, but um, it, it's, it's designed to happen live. So we could, we could keep going together and I could share more and more data live. Um, does that, does that answer the question or was there more to that? No, I think that was it. I mean, it okay. was, um, I think that's it. Um, Another one which, which I thought was interesting was, uh, I could tell this person is an old time user because um, you know in GA there is, there is an option for data sharing, right? But that's normally for using a lab quest. So the question was, what's the difference between that data sharing and this new data sharing? Good question. Um, so let me pull this back up here. And okay, so data sharing here. So you see there's lots of options here. There's connect to LabQuest, Logger Pro, or a graphical analysis source. So what we just talked about was connecting to a graphical analysis source. Um, but if I click on this and I go into, and that's online. So uh, connecting to a graphical analysis source is the only one right now that you can do online via an internet web connection. If you happen to be in the same room with a LabQuest 2 or LabQuest 3 um, or Logger Pro that's set up to data share, that is called a local data sharing connection. And that's what this tab here is for. And you click on that and you can see, and I happen to be at Vernier headquarters right now. So there's some, some devices on and working. Uh, there's probably a LabQuest 2 in the room that's data sharing and I could click on it and I would see what um, what that LabQuest, what data is coming in on that LabQuest. So if I had a temperature probe connected to that LabQuest and it was doing a similar experiment, I would be able to get that. But that's a local connection only. You have to be in very relatively close proximity, basically the same classroom for that to work. Um, yeah, the only one that will online is graphical analysis. Yeah, so that the pro version is the one that's got the ability to share on the web, which makes it great for um, remote learning, etc. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, what else? What did I miss, John? What, did, what didn't I talk about? I think you talked about everything. Someone had a question about like, would this work in Teams? Because you mentioned Zoom, but I think the critical thing there is right. Zoom and Teams are just ways to share video and screen share, and this works independently of that. So that wouldn't typically be a problem. So, yeah, I, yeah, it's it's. Um, I think because we're also used to screen sharing right now, um, it's a little bit. It takes a little bit to wrap your head around the fact that yeah, they're seeing my data, and I can I could walk them through it. I could do all the analysis in in Zoom or in Teams and show them exactly how to do the analysis. But it's not the same as them having the, the data at the same time going through it with you or going through it on their own, right? That's, that's what teaching is all about. It's about hands-on and, and learning through doing and um, them just watching you do it is not as powerful as them doing it either with you in tandem or um, on their own independently. Are there any other questions from our attendees for our wonderful scientists, John and Melissa? No? Oh, here's a good question. One, someone said, um, so once you disconnect, the data lives on their device. Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Yeah. If you disconnect from data sharing, so let me do it right now. So if you all are still connected, my data sharing is still on. So I will turn off data share. I go in here and I say, stop sharing. And um, now my student version is no longer connected. Now I, now I can share the student version if I wanted to. But yeah, it lives on their device. What other oh, questions? Uh, there was another question. What happens if you collect more than one trial? They'll get all those trials. So um, 
let's uh let me wonder if i have any does this one have more than one data no they'll get all of them i mean anytime you do uh let me open well i don't i'm not sure i want to do that let me do a new let me do a new experiment Close. Uh, let me kind of reset here. Okay, so I got a temperature probe connected and it was cold. So I took it out of the, uh, the endothermic reaction and I'm just gonna heat it up with my hand and day is gonna go up. Oh, that was such an exciting experiment. That's my trial one. And, um, and now I'm gonna do a second trial. So let's start the session so everyone can see it happen live. And now I have a new code because I had to start all over again. So get a new code. So my student over here is gonna data share BMY3ZL connect. Look, they have that first trial. And now I'm gonna do a second trial. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna just take some flat data and maybe this will still be cold and it'll go back cold. There we go. And there's my second trial. And see the data is, um, so the, uh, if you're being data shared to, you'll see right now that it's actually being collected. But what they're seeing is trial number one. But if I click on here, they can enable data set number two and see that coming in live. See how the, the yellow one is coming in live and the colors are the same. So you know you can have both of them on. I can even turn on my legend and get the data. And you notice it says collecting here, so they know data is being collected. And if I stop, and if I disconnect now, that data will live on their device. So I hope that answers that question. Nice. That was great. <laughs> and look at how quick it was. We did it all in like two minutes before the end of the thing. See, super easy. Wonderful. It's perfect timing because we're we're about up on um, time to stop. Thanks, Melissa and John. We, we wanted to thank everyone for attending this webinar today. And thank you to our staff scientists for your presentation. So as Melissa was saying, you have 10 days of access to GA Pro. But then after that expires, you can go to vernier.com slash GA Pro to sign up and get another trial. This, this second one will be for a full 30 days. So go ahead and do that. Um, and just as a reminder, this webinar is gonna be posted on vernier.com slash training in the next couple of days so that you and your colleagues can take a look at it anytime. Thank you so much for attending this webinar and stay safe out there, everybody. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye everyone.